Welcome, Flip Clock fans. You woke me out of my daydream. Of course, the clock doesn't make this sound. This is the Sony 6RC15, and it is obviously made to look like a car's dashboard instrument panel. When I got the clock, I was a little bit surprised. It's a little bigger than I thought it was. This is the 60 Hertz North American Canada version. They did make another version, a 220 volt version, 50 Hertz. Nice looking clock. It's not a um, traditional flip clock. It's a rolling wheel clock. Real small numbers there, but it uh, makes it look like the odometer, I suppose. We're going to give us a good looking over here, checking out these different knobs and the problems you might have with these knobs if you go to get you one of these clocks. Now, if you look here on this volume knob, it's got a screw there. Now, this the volume knob is often missing on these clocks. And we'll talk about why I think that is. This uh, the num the knob here that controls the time set, and it's very quiet. The time set here, and the inner knob controls the alarm. And this is the sleep knob. Turn that in a little bit better. To name his wife Grace as his next vice president. And if for some reason you wanted to sleep to, to, to uh, AM radio, because that's all it is, is an AM radio. We're going to go into detail about this clock in case you've decided to get one. And how you can look, look one over and know if it's a good deal or not. You can see there's a, a metal slat in there that fits inside. Now this one here is often broken. And in other videos, I've talked about how if these are really stuck, you can kind of jiggle them back and forth to try to rock that slat. Uh, but uh, listen, these have these break off. The plastic is not very tough here. All I can tell you is just pull. They do rust. Now I've put uh, anises on those, so hopefully that will never happen again. This is just your basic knob. The tuner knob here. Oh, and you'll see there's, uh, on these two, the last two I pulled off, they have a felt ring. These are sometimes missing. More for looks than anything. The volume knob is um, often broken on these clocks. The screw that goes in here is a steel screw that's going into a brass fitting. Personally, I personally believe what's happened is people have over tightened those and I can tell you from experience I do have another clock that I've used for parts that you can strip out that brass uh, threads that are inside the clock so again some of the biggest problems people have with their clocks is trying to, to torque down these screws there's just as simply no reason for many of these screws to be torqued down But you can't control what was done in the past. The video today is going to really go into detail about how to take it apart. It may be a little longer than some because um, it's it's a little hard in places. This is your standard plug back before they had polarized plug. So whenever you see screws, pretty obvious we're gonna we're gonna take those screws out. It's a smaller type uh, screwdriver you'll need to get in there. Uh, I'm taking them out now and um, you can see a machine screw. Stainless steel likely. And the other thing, wait a second. No user qualified. Uh, well, oh, well, we'll do it anyway. And uh, so this right here has to come off. This base does have to come off. You can see there's a cork piece there. Sometimes that's missing on these clocks. This one's in good shape. But this cord is held in place by this little thing we have to take off. This, these two screws hold the, the base onto the clock body, but also hold the, uh, the cord down. Let me see. If you're wondering, the longer screws go in there. And you, if you, you might be able to see there's a tab there. You can't just yank this off. You kind of have to slide it forward just slightly. And there you'll see a tab that that catches on to. Now, 
the cord's been tied in a knot and you can see where the, this is where it's indented where it would be held in place but that knot's going to go back when you put this together it's going to go back in that channel so if when you're reassembling just keep that knot loose like that there's the tuner wheel and on you can tell that this is a clock that has a stringed tuner which can be a nightmare we've got the two buttons here they pull straight up this one's the on and off switch so happens the person who I bought this off of uh, thought it wasn't working and what it needed was to be removed and lubricated down in there but and it's working fine now on, on your clock you may find those little red buttons there are, are blue and I don't know why there's a, a difference there these need to be depressed so that we can remove the clock body so we'll go ahead and do that now I'm not going to tell you this is easy you do want to take your time and be careful I'm taking my my fingernail here my thumbnail and working that out and I'm going to push forward there's a metal plate right there I'm kind of pushing on I wouldn't take any any knife or anything like that uh, fingernail is the best I mean my fingernail is going to break before I screw up this thing and I'll sacrifice my fingernails for this so it is in there snug so I'm going around and trying to loosen this up I'm not going to cut the video to show you this is this is what it takes to get this apart maybe there's a a trick to it but uh with the flip clocks i'm not in in any real hurry generally you'll see a little bit why this is doing this when we get this apart now you can see the knobs there where the knobs connect in they're moving forward so we're on the go now we can uh, get a grip and kind of push this down this metal plate should help You've got to watch the components that you're pushing on you got to watch that these buttons have clearance if they've popped up, you want to push them back down so you don't break them. You can tell I'm, I'm not in a big hurry here. The cord needs to be loose so it can feed through. And the good thing about this situation is that uh, the cord can come free completely of the case. So if you want to wash the body, which you will need to if you've got an old one. So we'll take a look here. Look how compact this is. That's a little speaker that's on the back. It's actually stuck inside a rubber, kind of a donut, and that donut's uh, glued onto the to the metal um, structure there. So that had been, came off, and I had to put it back on with some. I've got some silicone rubber glue that uh, works good for applications like that. It's actually a glue that's used for uh, washer felt, washer and dryer felt. It's a Whirlpool product, and it's. Uh, it's really good for stuff like that. So you see everything is really compact. The engineering here is just amazing to get it all in this small space. Anyway, what we've got here, we've got these a tab here and then a tab, two tabs on the top, one on the bottom that this has to be cleared from. So you wanna you wanna be careful here. So I'm what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna depress the black there and lift up a little bit on the clear plastic. Just take taking my time. I'm gonna probably try the same here, just gently lift up. And it is a little forgiving, and it came clear just fine. So we've got a nice uh, nice specimen here, pretty scratch-free, and they do scratch. So we've got to be careful there. Now that there, you can see that looks like an indicator light, and it is looks it does look like red plastic or red glass. And I assure you, that is not supposed to light up. It's all for decoration. When you take these all apart, you can see there's even a tape over top of that so, to stop light from actually bleeding through from uh, the... Uh, the clock face light which just happens to be an orange neon glow bulb so it's kind of strange that they did that but it's just there okay so here's our tuner that's it and you can see the string pulling that side to side now hopefully if you've got one of these clocks you're not watching this to try to figure out how to put it back together and I can help you if you've if you've done that, but uh, when you're taking these apart, if you do have to take this apart to where the stringer comes off, take pictures, take movies. I'm not going to take it apart that far. Let me say the light, uh, it's going to be a nightmare to change that light. You, you'll have to take off that front piece. We're not doing that today, like I said. Um, now these the buttons in the back here they're spring-loaded 
that copper piece does slide off uh, if you had to get in there and try to lubricate a little bit. Now, in the process of taking this apart, this piece fell out. So I had to kind of chase down where that came from. It's copper. It's a piece of copper. You can see where someone's glued it. And so I would imagine that is shielding for the one part, some part of the radio component. They probably found out later that it needed to be shielded and you can see right there where the glue marks have pulled away from this uh, piece there. So we'll just glue that with some of that uh, glue I talked about earlier. I really like that silicone glue. So there you have it, the Sony 6RC15, the speedometer flip clock. When you get the time, come visit us at flipclockfans.com.